I'd like to say I'm very honored to uh, to be with you tonight, and man, I'm telling you what, uh, I, uh, it's just amazing uh, what how God works, uh, ain't it? It's amazing. I, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna tell you a story uh, to begin with to let, kind of let you know uh, just how 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 this came to be here tonight, and, and how God just ordained and worked things out uh, in a way that you know that I wouldn't even imagine. Uh, this all started back last. Uh, I've told uh, I've told I told someone the other week about it, and I can't remember where I was at now. But I was telling so I told Pastor Burzins on the phone about it. That's what it was. And and uh, but anyway, my, my son-in-law Rhett Brown over there, he uh, he is he had gotten on the uh, he had gotten on the uh, the YouTube and began to watch Pastor Anderson's uh, a lot of his messages and I mean just I mean just every time he turned around he was telling me what Pastor Anderson had preached and and uh, and man I just seen him you know I was preaching the whole time this was going on I mean we, we, we I mean we're serving the Lord and and uh, and he's coming and every time he gets in the truck with me Every time he climbs in the truck, he's got that King James Bible in his hand. And, and uh, he gets in there and he says, man, let me show you something that I heard today. Or let me show you something that Pastor Anderson preached the other night. I want to show you something this and that and other. And, man, I'm telling you what, man, I'm just sitting there. I'm just getting full. You know, I mean, he's, you know, iron sharpens iron, the Bible says. And, uh, and, and he just began to, you know, just, just fill him up. And I said, man, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to check this out. You know, and man, I started, I started listening in. And, and, and one thing led to another. And, and he went up to, uh, up to, uh, at, somewhere around Atlanta up there and, and Pastor Anderson was there and Pastor Burgess was there and, and uh, yeah it was a Pastor Burgess church as a matter of fact where it was at but, but anyway uh, he come back and, and, uh, and he was talking about soul winning and I've always been the kind of, per, kind of person since I got saved I've always been the kind of guy that wants to see people saved and I want people to, have to experience what I've experienced I want them to accept Christ you know I want them to go to heaven uh, and uh, well, anyway, uh, he, he he was telling me about what what you know how how uh, Pastor Anderson's church uh, so on and how Pastor Burns and him did it and, and this and that and other. He wanted us to implement it, you know, and, and begin doing it. And man, I said I'm all for it, you know, I'm all for it, you know. All, and we've always even before that we were telling people we were always telling people about the Lord and and uh, and and, see, and have seen some people saved. But but anyway, uh, they they had a soul a soul winning marathon, of course, last September. Uh, Labor Day weekend, and uh, and 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 Rhett, and I didn't know that this was coming up until I, I had called Rhett the uh, week before or something like that. I said, I tell you what, I said I don't know what Pastor Burns and them's doing out there. If if they got some kind of training or some kind of something where we can go with them, and we can go soul winning. I said, I'd love for our church to join in with him and just tell him that and just and then and just see what he says, you know, and uh, he did. And, and, and well, in the meantime, I got a pastor friend of mine. Uh, he's an independent Baptist preacher. And uh, but uh, he had a, was having a dove shoot. Well, I had not been dove hunting in a long time, a long time. I hadn't went dove hunting. So me and my wife was over in Athens. And she says, I, I said, I really don't want to borrow a shotgun. And she says, well, you just, you know, it's just fine. Buy you a cheap one or something, you know. And, and I did. So we went to Academy Outdoors and I bought one. Well, in the meantime, I did not know that he was making contact with Pastor Burson's there. I didn't think he was going to call him that quick. And uh, he, so he calls me. The night I got home with that shotgun, boy, I was looking at it. Man, I done bought me some shells. And man, I was, man, I done went and bought license to go hunting, you know. Ain't been in years, not years. And there was going to be some preaching at this dove shoot. And I was going to be, you know, of course. And, and uh, well, anyway, uh, he calls me and he said, man, I got hooked up with Pastor Burson's. I said, really? I said, man, I'm glad. Boy, praise the Lord. And then all of a sudden he said, well, it's this Saturday. Opening day of dove season. And I, I said, oh, really? He said, yes. Yes, it's, it's this weekend. And uh, well, anyway, I didn't say anything about the shotgun. I didn't say anything. I said, okay, Rhett. I said, all right. Man, I said, man. I said, hey, there's no way I'm going to let, he said, and he says, well, well I, we'll go out there, we'll go soul winning. You, you know, if you can't go, if there's something you got, go, got going on, and I didn't tell him about the dove shoot or nothing. I said, no, I ain't got a thing in the world going on. I ain't got nothing going on. Well, anyway, I told my wife, I said, there's no way, there's no way in the world. I said, I didn't told him to talk to Pastor Burgess. I said, man, we need, we, we need to be doing this. And I said, I'm not going to go. Well, sure enough, that's what happened. And I come out there and, and cross paths there with uh, Pastor Burgess Church at Stronghold Baptist Church. The shotgun is still in my closet and it has not been shot yet. 
Uh, but uh, but but anyway, uh, but that it's just amazing how God works. And then you know I was able to come up there, and our church come up there and went soul winning all day there, and just had a great time. Saw some people saved, and uh, and man, just praise the Lord for that. And and uh, and and then you know He calls me. I was going through something. Anybody that's a pastor here, you know that man. There's a lot of times men of God we go through things. Man, there's things in our lives, there's things that happens in our churches that we're not pleased with and, and we have to, some decisions we have to make and different things. And I was struggling a little bit and man, I was, I was struggling bad, to be honest with you. And I told my wife I was struggling, you know, she'd been, well, it's going to be all right. Well, the phone rings a couple of nights later and it's Pastor Burson's. And he tells me, he said, man, we're going on this camping trip. Our, our, our brother's church is getting together. And, uh, and, and he said, I would just, I would love, the Lord just laid it on my heart for you to come and preach one of those nights. I mean, I just, he don't know it, but there was tears streaming down my face when he was saying that. And man, I was just so honored and, and, and just so joyous over that. I said, man, look at God, look what he's doing. You know, he's, he's showing me, look here, boy, you got you to gotta, you gotta keep your hands to the plow. You got to keep plowing. You got to keep going. And, uh, but, uh, and then, you know, I, I've been looking forward to this for, for, you know, ever since he called me on that March. It was sort of toward the end of March, I guess it was, when he called me about what y'all what y'all got going on, what's going on down here this week. And and, uh, and then all of a sudden, I'm sitting and standing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at work, and I get a text from my daughter, Kayla. And she says, Angelica just texted me, or it messaged me, and said they're going to come to our church Sunday morning. And I'm like, that's, that's weird, you know. I'm like, okay, I, I, I can, we can handle that. And they're going to come to our house, and, they, and, they, and we're going to have lunch. And, and man, and, and I began to thinking about Angelica. I said, who is Angelica? And I thought about, well, she was pregnant when we were up there uh, in September. And, uh, man, they came. And, and the last, they, they've been there since the week, I believe it was after Easter, the week, the Sunday after Easter. They've been coming on Sunday morning and Sunday night. And we've been going soul winning at, in the afternoon at the church. The first week we were there, I think they, had, they came. I think they had one saved. Uh, anyway, yesterday they was there. And we had four saved yesterday afternoon. And just a little old village apartments down there, uh, it, it, right down the road from our church right there. It's very, very close to the church. Our Bowman is such a small town, and it's very rural. I mean, you know, it's, it's not, not close like it is where a lot of y'all are from, and it's a little different. Uh, the terrain is a lot different. Uh, we're down here, in, you know, out here in the country, you know, and, and I think the Bible Belt is one, of the, is one of the worst places to have to go soul winning. Because everybody knows everything. Uh, everybody knows everything. Well, Granny took me here, and Mama took me there. Well, my Mama was this, and we were that, and this one, you know. And they can, before you know it, they, they, you, you know, they 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 end up they're trying to convince you of something, you know. And you're trying to tell them about the Lord. But anyway, I, I'm just I'm just blessed to be here tonight. And uh, I, I and, and I, I, I he, he said you can have to have Monday. <laughs> or Saturday. I said, let's get this over with because ain't no way I can follow the men of God that's going to be here this week. I can no way that I can. God called me to preach years and years ago and I ran for a long time. And uh, about six years ago, I guess, or so, I finally answered the call to God uh, to preach the gospel. But, but anyway, I'm just so grateful to be here with you tonight. And I just want, I just want to encourage you tonight. I try to encourage you. Uh, I want to try to encourage Pastor Burson and these other pastors that's here tonight. And, and also, I want to encourage you. Uh, because, man, we're walking through a world right now, man, where things are, y'all know the way things are going. Yeah. And, man, we need encouraging. And, and, man, I tell you what, this, this is special right here. Man, I took a few days off from work this week, and I'm going to be down here, and our church is going to try to come every night this week. I want them to hear these men of God and, and get to know y'all even better. And, and uh, I just pray that, uh, I just pray it don't, it don't end. You know, we need each other in our lives, and somebody that's real. Huh? Somebody that's real. Y'all don't mind if I preach out of King James Bible, do you? Uh, y'all ain't got nothing against that, do you? If you do, you're tough. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Y'all, hey, I can't preach hard to y'all because y'all get it every Sunday. So, you know what I'm saying. So, but anyway, uh, he's already read the text tonight. And, and I just want to try to get into God's word right here with you for a little bit. But I, I, I do, I do, I would love to pray. Uh, pray, pray right quick before we, before I begin and, and uh, let's just see what the Lord has for us tonight from his word. Father, we love you and we thank you again for another day you've given us. And Father, we thank you so much, God, for your word. And Father, if I did not have your word, God, I, I'd be lost. And Father, if we didn't have the word of God, we wouldn't have our salvation tonight, God. And we thank you. And Father, we thank you that Jesus was the word. And I, I thank you tonight, God, that he, will, he chose God to come and dwell among me. <laughs> I thank you, God, that Lord, he laid his life down. I, Lord, didn't nobody make my Savior die. He freely gave his life for us, God, and for the whole world. The Bible says, for the God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, his only begotten son, Lord, to, to come and die, Lord, on a cruel cross of Calvary, Lord, that I might have life, that I might be able to stand here amongst your people tonight. And Father, we pray now, God, that you'll just help me tonight, God. And God, I pray I cling to John 14, 26 tonight, God. I pray you teach me all things. Bring things into my remembrance tonight, God. I, I pray, God, you anoint me, God, from on high. I pray, God, you help me to uh, hold down the, the arm of the flesh tonight, God. Help me not to preach what does, as, does saith Ed, but what, what the Bible says here tonight, Father. Lord, help me to decrease that you might increase tonight, God. And Lord, may I get help tonight. Help me first here tonight. God. If nobody else, God, help me here tonight, God. I need some encouraging for you from your word. And Lord, I know they do too, Father, or they wouldn't be here. I give you all praise and I give you all glory for it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But tonight I want to talk out of the book of 2 Corinthians for, to you for a little bit. Um, is, uh, God just really uh, impressed this upon upon me this past week, and man, even Sunday morning when I went into my study to get ready for to kind of brush up on some stuff for Sunday morning, God had me over here, and I said, God, I'm telling you what, now I'm supposed to go preach this morning. You, you, you know, He said, I got that, I got this. Don't worry about that. You need to take this in what I'm supposed to give you for Monday right now. But uh, I just praise God that He that, that He is so faithful. Amen. Amen. But tonight I want to talk about, uh, if I had to title of what I'm going to talk to you about tonight, I want to talk about some strong men. Strong men. And, and look, at y'all ladies, don't, don't say, don't turn me off. Don't say, well, he ain't talking to me. Yeah, I am. I, but I do want to, I do want to encourage, the, uh, the, uh, encourage you tonight and uh, help you to be stronger when you leave here tonight. But the Bible says there in verse 1 of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, in verse 1 it says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry... Therefore, for this reason, seeing we have this ministry, Pastor Burson has a ministry, I have a ministry, believe it or not, you have a ministry. Man, you have a ministry. We all have a ministry that is to go and to share the gospel with the lost people of this world. We have a ministry. And look at here, as we have received mercy, hallelujah, praise God that we have received mercy. Man, we didn't get what we deserved, did we? Man, we all deserve to be in a place called hell today. But praise God that some lady come by my house when my wife was watching a bunch of little kids. And man, I was back backwards and, 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 and acting crazy and, and in, in the world and thought I was saved when I was nine years old. If, I'd had, if, I'd have went, if I had died then, I would have split hell wide open. But praise God, that lady came by and invited me to a church. And, and man, the man preached in the Holy Ghost and out of a King James Bible. And man, I gave my heart and life to Jesus. Uh, and, and man, I ain't been the same since. Praise God for his mercy. We faint not. We faint not. We get tired. We grow tired. Pastors grow tired. Daddies grow tired as you're leading your family. And, and man, I tell you what, Satan will bring to you, you know, uh, well, it won't hurt for you to listen to a little bit of this kind of music. Satan will uh, uh, come to you and he's, you, you see all these things. Looks like I saw the other day on something on the internet where some clowns on there talking about. We need to take out John chapter number eight where it talks about the woman that was caught in adultery. I don't think so. It needs to be put in the footnotes. No, somebody needs to put their foot somewhere in you. Amen. 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 The Bible says it should not be taken away from them. And anybody that takes away from this book, they're in trouble, right? Amen. Amen. You don't add to or take away from God's word. He ain't got he don't he don't have the authority to remove that from that King James Bible. He said, he even said this in his little article. He said, hey, y'all King James folks probably gonna get mad. Yeah, if I could have got my hands on you. Huh? The Bible says there, but have, look here, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Why don't preachers just preach against those out there that are preaching false doctrine? Huh? Why don't they? Hey, they're scared to say anything. They, they, they hear something, or, or just in a conversation with your buddy at work, and he says something that's false, and we'll say, well, I, he's, I ain't going to say nothing. No, we ought to say something. They need to be corrected, because you know what they're doing? They're leading somebody else. They're leading somebody else wrong. The Bible says that we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. There's a lot of craftiness in the pulpits today. There's a lot of craftiness in the world today. Man, I'm telling you what, man, you look on your TV, man, you have to watch, what, uh, watch what, uh, what's going on in the world and watch what you're taking in, watch what your children are watch, seeing, because Satan is crafty. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. There's a lot of that going on today, right? Frauds. 
Frogs, Joel Osteen. Would y'all say he was a fraud? Hey, man, he's a fraud. He is a fraud. Yes, he is. Man, I'm telling you what. But we have renounced the hidden things of this time. not walking in the crowd. Not handling the word of God deceitfully. Man, if you got a man of God in the pulpit at your church, and man, he is, he is preaching the King James Bible, and he is preaching, and he, and he is preaching the truth, man, you better hold on to it. You better hold on to it. Man, there's too many out there that's not true today. Too many. Too many out there that's preaching a false gospel. Committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Now when you talk about a conscience, as I was thinking about a conscience, a preacher ought to preach the word of God. And if he's preaching the word of God in the way he ought to be preaching it, there ought to be some consciences stirred. Amen? Huh? They ought to be some consciences stirred. Man, you ought to sit there, man, if, if, if there's something in our lives, if, if, we, if there's something that just ain't right there, man, we ought to, we ought, we ought to feel sorry for that when a man preaches, in the, preaches the word of God. Right. Our conscience ought to bother us. We ought to have a conscience. Man, I'm telling you what, we ought to have a conscience. We need a conscience. But look what the Bible says in verse 3. He says, but if our gospel be hid or veiled, it is hid to them which are lost. There wasn't nobody knocking us around or getting, wasn't nobody trying to jump in front of you yesterday, sister, when you was talking to that lady trying to tell them about Jesus, were they? No. Nobody's telling anymore. This is the only group. And when my, when my son-in-law brought Pastor Anderson to my attention and, 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 and just this group of churches here, when he brought that to me, I, and, I, and, and, and we see soul winning there, there's nobody out soul winning. I promise you, the local bad, the, the bad, it don't matter what church they're from. They ain't doing it. And then a lot of these that are, they're spreading false doctrine. And a lot of them that are, it's not faith alone. It's something else added to it. And there's so many people out there that's mixed up on, on eternal security, thinking they can lose their salvation somehow. And they will argue with you to tooth and nail about it. They will. They've been trained up wrong, and they're going to die, and they're going to go to hell. They're going to go to hell. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. We can't hide it, church, man. We got to tell it. Man, we, got, we can't be bashful. And, and I know a lot of times, man, I, I, I told, told somebody yesterday when we were standing out there while we were soul winning, I told somebody, I said, a lot of times people won't go tell nobody about Jesus. They won't go soul win because they already made up their mind in their hearts when they, before they get there that they're going to be rejected. We got to go into Holy Spirit, man. You got to go into the Holy Spirit and knowing that it's not us doing the work. No way. We're preaching his gospel, not our gospel. Amen. It's his gospel. That's what we got to be. That's what we got to be, be about. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. The God of this world. Who's the God of this world? That's Satan. He has blinded people's eyes. He has blinded pastors. He has told them, hey, you don't got to preach that. You don't, hey, you, don't, you don't need to preach that. You don't. Hey, it's God's word. I preach the whole counsel of God. Amen. The whole counsel. Okay? The whole counsel of God. Because the devil has blinded the minds, I'm telling you what, of them which believe not. But look here. Lest the light of the glorious gospel, glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image, image of God, should shine unto him. We're shining that light. Man, I'm telling you, you just don't know uh, the, the Pastor Burzins and, and, and Pastor Anderson and all these other, Pastor Menez and all that, just don't understand, just don't realize. Man, I'm telling you, it ministers to us. Man, my son-in-law is leaps and bounds in the Word of God, uh, grown and matured, both of them. Both my son-in-laws have. By listening to them, I told the church last night, I, yesterday morning, I told them, I said, I don't take credit for nothing that, 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 them, that they've learned. Now, granted, I'm sure they've learned some stuff from the pulpit, but I'm telling you what, man, they have, they, that, man there's not any churches that I don't even want to listen to anymore, y'all. We need to hold on to what you got. I know it's tough, and I know, man, people hate you because you love the gospel and because you preach the right gospel. They're going to hate you. They hated Jesus. They're going to hate you. They're going to tell you that, you that you're a hater because you're against homosexuality, against gay marriage, that you're against and that you know that they're going to die and go to hell. They've been gave up and, and turned over to a reprobate mind. You tell some people like that, they'll be willing to shoot you. But it's the truth. It is the truth. The Bible says it. You know why I don't nobody believe it? Because nobody preaches it. We've all looked over that. They've all looked over it to please those that's out there. Amen. That's what's, that's what's going on. For we preach not ourselves. 
For we preach not ourselves. For we preach not ourselves. I'm not preaching for myself tonight. I'm not preaching of myself. I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And man, I'm telling you what, that says it all. But Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts. Hallelujah. Man, that light removes darkness. Light removes it. When you go in a dark room, what happens? You flip the light switch on. The darkness leaves. That's the same way with the gospel. When you flip the light on to the gospel to somebody, darkness has got to go. I see darkness going everywhere yesterday in that, trailer, in, that, in that apartment complex. Man, you should have seen them running. They was ducking. Man, boy, somebody sharing the gospel. I got to go. I told, my, I told a guy that was with me there, one of my church members, uh, Neil there. I said, look at him. Look at him running. My, my. You would think we was going to shoot him or something. Huh? Running. Ducking. Grab the kids. Honey, let's go. Huh? It's sad. It's sad. The Bible says, For God who commanded the light to shine our darkness hath shine in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in our, in our, in our earthen vessels, our bodies, that excellent, uh, excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The power is not of us, y'all. The power is in the gospel. The power is in the word of God. I could stand here tonight just like, oh, I believe it was Ezekiel, Ezra. Just like Ezra did, all he done was stood up and read the gospel. And then there was people, of man, on their faces. It's the gospel. It ain't me. It ain't me. Which God, God wants to use men of God to, to, to proclaim his gospel. But, man, you just read the word of God. And people, well, people it, it, deals, it, it deals with our hearts. Okay? We are troubled on every side. Man, our pastors get troubled on every side, don't we? Troubled on every side. Troubled on every side. But yet we're not distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair. We're not without hope. We have hope. Huh? We have hope. Man, we have hope. It's easy for us to focus on the things that's going on around us. It's easy to get focused on those things and, and think, man, it's just no use. But man, there is. Man, think of the times, that, the things that uh, the Apostle Paul went through. If anybody deserved to quit, it was the Apostle Paul. Huh? The things that he faced and in prison and, and, and strung and beaten and all this stuff. And my Lord, but he says, I'm going to finish the race. He says, man, I'm reaching for the prize. Right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We would do well to pattern our lives after the, the life of Paul. Amen. And the Bible says here that uh, we're persecuted, and not, but not forsaken. Hey, we ain't been persecuted yet, church. We ain't been persecuted yet. Man, we're getting a little dab a bit of it right now. Every time, I ain't going to say it. But anyway, but uh, always bearing, always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus. Always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. Man, is the life of Christ being made manifest or, or come to pass in our bodies? How is that, is, that's how it ought to be. Man, it ought, it ought be, Christ ought to be manifesting on the outside of us, man. There ought to be a difference there. Man, we ought to be telling others about him. For we which are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. Always. You're always being, you're always being, uh, just like I said in those verses, we're always being, being cast down. We're always being uh, talked about. You're always being put in, the, in, the, in, the, in distresses. As long as you're going to follow Christ, it's always going to be that way. If you're going to be a true follower and someone that's going to really believe the right, the right gospel, you're always going to have somebody nabbing at you like a little chihuahua on your heels. Always. You're always going to have opposition. We're always going to see things. People's always going to be coming against you with things because that's nothing but the attacks of the devil because he's wanting to stop us. He's wanting to stop pastors like Pastor Burson and Pastor Anderson and, 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 and uh, uh, Pastor Jimenez and all these other pastors and the pastor here. He's wanting to stop us all the time. Because why? Because you're standing for truth. If you ain't standing for truth, they ain't going to mess with you. They're not going to mess with you. Satan's not going to mess with you if you're not standing for truth. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe 
and therefore speak. Why do pastors get up and preach Sunday after Sunday? Why do you go soul winning every Sunday after Sunday or whenever you're going? It's because you believe. It's because you believe. It's because I believe is why I'm here tonight. If I didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I wouldn't have said, I wouldn't have came here. I believe. Amen. Amen. That's right. It's because we believe. And that is all it takes. And, and we, and, and people, I believe that's the, the God, I believe that's why people, there's not a lot more people have been saved in the past as, as, as they are, as they can be. It's because we've shared it in the wrong way. It just takes believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. People think you've got to go to church to be saved. People think you've got to clean up this and clean up that and clean up this before Christ to save you. I don't think so. It's faith and faith alone. Amen. And then he cleans you up. And then he helps you. And then he guides you. And he strengthens you. He puts people in your life. He puts pastors that spit all over you every Sunday to help you. Huh? That's what he does. That's what he does. All of them over there get full of the Holy Ghost every Sunday. Because we've got a small church and I can't help but spit on them. Hmm. Bible says here that uh, I got, I, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus. Wow. The, the same God that raised up the Lord Jesus Christ will also raise us up. Amen. We've already been raised. Man, we've been resurrected on the inside. We got heaven on the inside of us. Heaven's on the inside. Heaven's already there. We, we're waiting to, to go to heaven one day, whether it's by death or whatever. But I'm telling you what, we have heaven on the inside. And we always walk around like we're eating persimmons. Huh? Or a frown on our face. Or, or what's them things I don't like? Prunes. I can't handle them. Uh, amen. All right, so it says that uh, for we which live are always living unto death for Jesus' sake. Y'all done got me messed up here. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes. Mm. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For which cause we faint not. We faint not. What causes us ought to make pastors and, and children of God not to faint? Knowing that what Jesus done for us. Knowing that what he done in our life. That's what keeps us going. That's what keeps me getting up every morning is the hope. I'm telling you what, the world don't have the hope that we have. Hey, there's people right here in Elberton, Georgia. I'm from here. I can talk about them. There's people right here in Elberton, Georgia that wouldn't come out to something like this if their life depended on it. You could have told them that Jesus was going to be here. And they never showed up. I'm just telling you, I'm from this area. I have witnessed around this area. I know how these people are. Huh? They hard. That's the way it is. But man, I'm telling you what, if you got the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ in you, man, you'll run to something like this. It makes me wish I'd have just went ahead and took it Tuesday and Wednesday. One of y'all got a spare room down here? Spare tent? Come on down, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. Hey, if I got fired, would one of y'all hire me? It's a long drive to, uh, it's a long drive somewhere in places y'all come from. I wouldn't ever make it. Uh, for we which cause we do faint, we faint not. But though our outward man perish. This old body's perishing, you know that? You know how I figured that out when I turned 50? I realized my body's perishing. I realized that. I realized that when I wake up or I wake up in the middle of the night and this arm's asleep, you know, and this is just now waking up. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and my, you know, all, and just wake up in all kind of fixes, you know? You got to take an Advil to go to bed and one to get up. Uh, amen. Yes, sir. You got to take four if your granddaughter stays with you. Uh, yes. Amen. The Bible says, it says that this outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed, by, renewed day by day. The inward man is renewed day by day. Now, is that just automatically going to happen? No, sir. It don't just automatically renew day by day. You got to renew it. You got to renew that inward man with the, with the inward book. You got to renew the inward spirit with a spiritual book. You don't renew the inward man with the field and stream or the bass, whatever them, all them magazines are, okay? The NIV or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. 
I heard this man tell this joke one time. He was a preacher. He's King James only. And he said that uh, he was reading the King James Bible there and he was preaching. He said this old, he said this lady stood up and said, uh, well, that ain't what my NIV says. He said, most magazines say anything. <laughs> Amen. 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 The non-inspired version, they say. <laughs> Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. I'm going to hurry up, okay? I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 40. I'm going to read you something right here. Isaiah chapter number 40. Isaiah 40. I, I, I probably bored y'all enough tonight. And they done told me they filmed me. When, when whoever watches this after I'm gone, yeah, man, y'all have a laughing party down here after I'm gone. Yeah, they'll be able to hear y'all all the way up in Elberton. What they laughing at? That old guy that went down there and preached, that redneck that preached down there tonight from Bowman, Georgia. Sword of Spirit Baptist Church. Don't go there. Isaiah chapter number 40. And now let's look at, uh, let's look at verse 29 through 31 there. And look what it says. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Man, I'm telling you what, if you come in here tonight, man, you, may, you, you, may, you down here camping, you're having a good time, but inside you may be needing some strength. I praise God for Pastor Burgess and even get some preachers to come down and, and man, and preach. Man, I just putting that in there, that's just amazing, you know, to, to be encouraged while you're here. Man, look at all of God's beautiful creation and, you know, and, and, and thinking and, and praying and, and hearing preaching and sitting outside and listening to the crickets and, and whatnot. And even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Amen. Hallelujah, man. That is a great. I know people have wore that scripture out, talk, uh, reading it. And as you see it everywhere. But man, it's the word of God. And it's the truth. And I praise God for it. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Our light affliction is but for a moment. I've been saved about 20 years now. And I'll tell you what. I wouldn't trade nothing for what I... I all the bad that I had to walk through as a, as a child of God and the things that I've seen and faced, I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. Because you know what? I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if I had not had to walk through that. Because guess what? It's only for a season. It's only, our, our affliction is only for a moment. One day, man, we're going we, we, to be with the Lord. And wow, it's worth it all. Amen. It's worth it all, church. It's worth it all to stand for the Word of God. It's worth it all. Right. It's worth it all. Amen. For our light of fishing, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. Man, standing there with these people and, and they're talking back to you and they're, they're kind of, some. it can be some people that's ugly out there soul winning. I, I mean, y'all might not have them where y'all go, but where I go, we do. Oh, man. Uh, Ah, Y'all have them too to peek through the blinds and they hit the deck. Ah, they peep through the blinds and they go to running and, you know, and, and then some of them will slam the door in your face and some of them, you know, a lot of, and I'm going to tell you something. A lot of them, the reason they are the way they are is because of some other church. Amen? Amen? Some other church. Somebody looked down their spiritual noses at somebody or, or could be anything. But you know what? I should have quit a long time ago with my, over my feelings. Because, man, it's tough sometimes. But, man, we got to be like that old mule. You know what they do to a mule? They put blinders on him. Why? Where he don't deter to the right and he don't deter to the left. We need to put our spiritual blinders on. And, man, where we won't detour, but where we keep our eyes on the cross of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to do. I'm preaching to me tonight. While we look, I'm almost done. Y'all, I know y'all ready to go jump in the lake, make some s'mores. I mean, I, I know you're ready. I know you're ready. While we look not at the things which are seen, okay? We don't look at the things that are seen, okay? But at the things which are not seen. We don't look, we look at the eternal things. We're not looking at the temp temporal things. We look at eternal things. That's how we're different from the rest of the world. That's how the rest of the world knows that we're different. It's because we, 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 we're different. We're a peculiar people, the Bible says. Amen. I mean, we're holy pre I mean, we're priesthood. Yeah. My Lord, we're supposed to be peculiar. Okay? We're supposed to look different. We're supposed to talk different. We're supposed to act different. All right? I've always been different. <laughs> I always have. 
That's a joke. For the things which are seen are temporal. Okay? These bodies that we have, they're temporal. As I said a while ago, you know, we, they ache and th- as you get older, things happen to them. And, you know, we, things happen to our body and, and, and we can't understand, well, God, why, why is this happening to me? Maybe, maybe it's something that's really alien, something you're having to live with for the rest of your life. But just, just know this. Man, that's only temporal. That is only temporal. Because one day you're going to get a glorified body. Man, you're not, going, you're not going to have no pain, no sickness, and no death one day. Whether you go by death or whether you go in the rapture one day. Okay? Man, we're going to get a glorified. We're going to be, we're going to be just like Jesus. I mean, we're going to see Jesus there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But I am so thankful. I am so thankful for y'all giving me just an opportunity. Man, it's, I, 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 it's just, I was standing over there and we were singing. And when I get nervous, I go to singing real high. I couldn't, my wife, I mean, you know, I mean, she's hard to follow anyway, but, but, uh, and she knows that, but, uh, can't neither one of us carry a tune in a bucket, but we try, all right, but when I start singing high, man, Satan, you just don't know what Satan was doing right over here, he said, man, you're going, you fist to mess this up, boy, they got you on camera, and you're just going to be on the whole, the whole world's going to see you mess up and fall, but you know what, the moment I stepped up here, I felt the presence of the, whole, the presence of the Lord. And now y'all know why the presence of the Lord is because you brought him here. I really believe y'all are a great group of people. I don't know many of you, but I hope I get to know a lot of you. And man, I, I, I love the gospel. I love what Christ has done for me. And man, I just want to share it with the rest of the rest of the world. Right. I appreciate y'all having me. Appreciate you, brother Pastor Burzins, for having me. Thank you so much. I'll be back. I will be around this week, and my church family will be around, and, and we, we will be around, and uh, here's some of these other. I, I'm looking forward to Thursday and Friday night when, uh, you know, with uh, Pastor Anderson and, and uh, uh, Pastor Menez and then Pastor Jonathan Shelley, all y'all pastors. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Y'all just pray that uh, I can get here on time Tuesday and Wednesday because I'm off Thursday and Friday. I don't have to worry about it. And I was off today. So, uh, but anyway, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. God bless you.